Um, great reading this morning, Jenny. Fantastic job um, bringing forth this scroll. You know, the scroll's getting better and better and better as the month goes on. I just love it. So thank you so much, Jenny. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Excellent. All right. All right, Difference Makers, man, I'm telling you, if just that alone, if you just had that for this, um, uh, your day could absolutely change, but it is going to get better and better and better from here. I'm telling you, one of my favorite of all time speakers, um, always, Miss Lynn Gardner, is going to be blessing us with her presence this morning, guys. And uh, let me tell you just a little bit about Lynn. Um, first is she's a friend. Um, she's a dear friend, dear friend to all of us. She's a mother, a grandmother. She is a prayer warrior. I'm telling you, when, when she starts shaking the trees, stuff starts falling. <laughs> She's an author, um, has authored books, guys. Um, she is a, and as, as I said, she is just a woman of God, um, living larger always in life. And uh, and we're going to talk a little, a little bit more about that as she goes on. But today's message is just say yes. Good morning, Miss Lynn. How are you this morning, honey? Oh, good. I'm doing fabulous. I love that. When you start shaking the trees, things start falling. That's one of my favorite things you've ever said to me. You're such a kind friend and, and, and your words overwhelm me. Thank you, Wade. Good morning to you. Good morning to Jenny. And, you know, Jenny, I don't know. I love your voice and I always love to hear you read. But what a beautiful reading, exception, one of my favorite messages, so thank you. Good morning, Sam, wherever you are out there, the biggest difference maker, and good morning to all the rest. I'm so glad to be here. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I'm an expert at laughing at the world these days, and I, I've gotten pretty good at laughing at myself, and I hope you do too. You know, it's such a blessing to be back with you on the call. And again, this month, you know, over and over, month after month, and now year after year, and you might get tired of hearing me say that, but I want you to know I say it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you for blessing me and for allowing me to chase a rabbit or two with you this month again. Yeah, I hope you all had a great 4th of July celebrating this amazing, because troubling as it appears to be on the outside right now, it's still the greatest nation in the world, and my family has been honored to serve it. You know, I enjoyed our 4th year at the farm. It should come as no surprise to you. I only had half my tribe here, but believe me, we had enough explosives launched that I'm pretty sure my gang in Pittsburgh could probably see them. I can usually catch fireworks from uh, from a far from the porch, front porch all around the 4th, before and after the 4th. It's pretty cool. But this year it was incredible to see so many people you know, launching fireworks everywhere, big ones, big, big ones, bigger and better this year. Maybe that was because, you know, we refrained from last year due to all the lockdown nonsense and people were making up for that. I don't know. Or maybe there's a, a revived love for America. Either way, it's amazing. God bless America. Amen. You know, the Bible says to let your yes be yes and your no be no. It's a firm reminder of the importance of being people of our word. Don't bow, try to twist it all up. Just let your yes be yes, let your no be no. A few days ago, I was having a pretty intense conversation with a friend of mine about, about a miraculous opportunity that was literally being served to her on a silver platter. I tell you what, I was excited. I could see the hand of God all over it. And all the while I did, and highlighting the amazing benefits and giving thanks to God, she was vacillating and making so many excuses just to nix the entire miracle. And I realized a few things in that exasperating conversation, and one is that fear, that stinking four-letter word, can get in the way of just saying yes. Even miraculous is being served to us on a silver platter. And I was reminded of how difficult it is for so many people to make a decision because of it. So this message for you this morning was inspired by that exasperating conversation, and it's entitled, Just Say Yes. You know, some people can make split sense, uh, but most people don't make those easy decisions. You know, it all comes down to one or two things, bottom line. One is fear, but we just talked about that fear and lack of belief is the next. We've all had the opportunity to have an encounter with someone who, boom, just made a decision so quickly, we, it blew us away. It made it with absolute confidence and just, you know, was no trouble coming to whatsoever. I've talked to you guys about this before, about how in the auction business, that was always so perplexing to me. You know, in my world, they weren't 
buying trash properties. They're buying great properties, and they probably were going to go above retail. But, you know, some people could go up to that auction with absolute certainty. They had already said yes in their own mind that they were going to buy that property, and boom, it, they waived inspections. They waived everything and went about it to purchase in a split second. But most of them, and I would say don't remember the, the, the percentage necessarily, but more than half of the properties that I listed for auction, they never made it there. Many people were too afraid to make a split decision. So that's a very rare thing. Uh, you know, when people believe they have the luxury of time, they take their time, just like my friend Nixie and a miracle, just making all kinds of excuses because she just couldn't say yes. I'm not sure exactly why all that is, but my guess is there's been so much uncertainty in the world or, you know, year or so that so many people feel uncertain about speaking everything, even those miraculous opportunities that are sitting right in front of you on a silver platter. And it's all because we're afraid to say yes, afraid to make a decision. Maybe it's not the right decision. Maybe I'll be, you know, regret it. Whatever. We're talking ourselves out of some beautiful yeses. Not when we're forced to deal with people who can't seem to make a decision. And more often than not, it is incredibly frustrating. You know, just like my friend and many people I've dealt with in the past. But what most of you may not realize is that the yes, it begins with you. If you're not hearing yes as often as you want to hear it, it's time to look inside you, inside of yes. The mind is a complex thing for your clients, for you, for your team, for me, because you see the subconscious will kick in without us ever even realizing it. So it's funny how when we're presented with danger, you know, immediately we can go into a quick, sound decision, take action, boom. We don't second guess it. We don't ponder it. We stick up thinking about it without questioning that. Thank God we have that instinct. But that same instinct is within us for every decision, not just a danger one. But when time is on our side, when it's not necessarily, you know, like a life or death situation, we master not making decisions. We're either indecisive or we'll say no, we're not ready to say yes yet. Or in my world, in the Christian world, we'll often hear people say, I've got to pray about it. And most of the time, that's just buying time. Saying yes begins with you, folks. So it's time to look inward instead of pointing outward for the lack of yeses that you may be seeing in your life and in your business. I wish I had a dollar heard an excuse for why people aren't making a living in business. If I got a dollar for each one, I'd be retired. You know, most of the time when the scenario was relayed to me, I could clearly see that not only did the client not say no at all, but the you know, the entrepreneur had never said yes themselves. So, But regardless of the outward circumstance, people naturally want to blame something else for an inward problem that just comes down to saying yes. You know, when my kids were little, I got them used to, uh, you know, asking for what they wanted and uh, and prepared to hear the no's and the rejections in life. I built their character that way. So, you know, I tried to reach the the value of ask on it because, frankly, in life we have to. You don't ask people, they don't usually make a decision. But like so many people, they were afraid, right? They were just little kids, and they'd see, say things like, hey, mom, can you ask Bobby's mom if? Or, hey, mom, will you ask the coach if? You know, they're trying to pass the buck. They didn't want to ask for themselves. But all the while, I taught them to say, yes, why are you asking the question if you don't believe in the outcome? I I taught them to anticipate the yes, driving home the truth that if they don't ask the question, believing the answer will be yes, it rarely will be. So asking one is one of the key skills that we have to master uh, if we're going to, you know, work a positive with other people from a healthy relationship with someone else, you know, expecting someone to know what you want without asking. Come on, guys. It's pure craziness. People can't read our minds. But asking is rare because fear tells us that we might just hear now. And that's the true in every area of life. You know, half the time when people don't make, doesn't have that positive outcome, they can't begin to tell you why it didn't happen. But it will usually not happen because, they number one, they didn't ask, and they sure didn't anticipate the yes. Why would anybody say yes to you about anything from your faith to your business if you don't even think they will? Only 2% of the time, this is fact, when a man proposes to a woman, only 2% of the time, Time, do they hear or no? Now, now, why is that? That's a pretty big question. It's a life-changing thing, you know. But it's because he decides when he decides to pop the question 
you know, when he decides to put hard-earned money toward whatever size ring she's going to get, when he plans a perfect moment to ask, when he gets down on one knee, he's anticipating, yes, he already believes it. And the same belief systems need to follow us through every area of life. So we have to ask with belief in the outcome, and, and we just have to say yes in our own spirit. There are some practical things, uh, you know, for just a second before we get into the the bigger things. But one is that you have to tell yourself there's nothing to fear. As Franklin Roosevelt said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. My poor kids, if they heard that, (laughs) once they heard it five million times. And that can be applied to, uh, you know, to to anybody's life. You know, while you anticipate the yes, you have to overcome the fear. I'm afraid to ask for what they want, just like my kids were, right, because they're afraid of some horrific rejection and humiliation. I mean, what? People conjure up in their minds is fascinating, really. But it's just ridiculous to think about it. There are very few times in your life when you ask for something, and, and as a result of you asking that, you suffer severe consequences. In most cases, you know, no one hit you, no one spit on you, no one wrote you up in a local newspaper. In most cases, you know, the, about the worst thing that did happen or could ever happen is somebody says no. Frankly, most of the time they don't, but you can handle that. So talk about not anticipating the yes or how we're living our life in every area of life. And there's an old Chinese proverb that says, he who asks a question is a fool for five minutes. He, does, he who does not ask a question is a fool forever. So before you make your request of whatever that is, from leading somebody to the Lord to going in for sale in your business, you need to remind how important your request is. Tell yourself that the only thing that matters is whether or not you're making a good, clear point or presentation or whatever, right, and and focus on the merits of that question you're asking. But more than anything else, you have to believe in the outcome. And when you do, your fears will evaporate. You have to so you, know, you do that in the journey of faith, no doubt. And the way we sell ourselves in our journey of faith is by telling our testimony. This is who I was and this is who I am. But we have to sell ourselves in these areas of life. Before you try to sell somebody else, if you will, on what you're pre- representing, you've got to be sold yourself. You've got to believe that you will actually win them over and you've got to believe the yes is coming and the yes begins with you. If, if not, you'll ask you know, with far less confidence, with far less determination and that alone will cause the other person to take you and your point less seriously. So when you anticipate the yes, you know what happens? You stand, your confidence is bit bolder. You talk bolder. The, your value just cut, flows like, you know, hot, like water, and it will come out of your pores. When you anticipate the yes, you think to yourself, why in the world would they ever say no? You know, so people are influenced by your belief system, your confidence, and when you say yes, that's exactly what they're going to say. If you stay in that, oh, I really hope they do, I, I really want them to, you know, uh, you know, Come on, guys. You get used to hearing no when you get used to people disappearing because that's what they're going to do when you've got that wishy-washy, non-belief attitude. You lose them because you weren't sold on a sale yourself. Then we organize our thoughts, no doubt, every area of life. You know, when I was coaching my kids, I walked them through the order of the conversation, if you will, and you need to do the same thing in every area of your life. You know, it said that less than 10% the people who profess to be Christians ever share the gospel. And, you know, I think part of that's a heart problem. The other part is they don't even know what they would say. So think of say and how you're going to say it before you ask the question. If you don't think that guy uh, making a proposal didn't rehearse his words and all the, you know, the, the details of that proposal way before he asked the question, you got another thing coming. So you need to do the same thing. You might even write out what you're going to say, you know, specifically what you want the outcome to be and write your points and, and make it clear. You know what that does to you? It reinforces your yes. You can't expect to get results you want if the other side doesn't understand even what you're asking. So just writing down what you want will spur you on into believing that you're going to hear yes. And you ask with confidence. If I practice your request in front of a mirror, that helps some people. Do my old Dale Carnegie days would have you do all that. But you might some, ask someone else to, you know, to watch you, to listen how you're presenting. You might want to come across, you do want to come across with, that, you know, sincerity and enthusiasm. And sometimes, frankly, folks, and different personalities, that takes a little work, you know. But you, when you ask from the heart, when you're perceived as firm and polite and passionate and friendly, you increase your odds of success or getting the yes you want tenfold. So make sure you're 
you're, you are confident. Make sure you believe you're going to hear a yes. Make sure you've practiced what you're going to say, and make sure you maintain eye contact them so that they can see the yes, yes in your eyes. You prepare for resistance. Come on, guys. It's not realistic, you know, to expect that we'll never have rejection or resistance, right? Even if you do everything right, you might still meet with resistance here and there. The other person might want to, you know, talk to somebody else about it. And, again, we hear that. Well, I'm going to ask my dog, you know, have to pray about it. i got to talk to my husband. i got to talk to my wife. You know, they're going to blow, up, blow us off because they say they have to go someplace else for input. They might put you off hoping, you know, you'll forget about it and you'll just, just quit, you know, just asking them, right? But rarely do they ever say no. But when you're prepared for the yes, you know what? They don't give up easily either. They just, it, it, because you're not making it easy for them because you believe in the yes, because you believe in what you're, you're trying to present to them. So if someone resists, remind yourself that you may not get what you want immediately. So what? Don't view the other person's resistance as a, a dead end or a no forever, but it's just a part of a continuing discussion that will lead to the yes. And by all means, avoid any kind of reaction. If they reject you, who cares? Just be polite. Be gracious, be firm, and anticipate the yes the next time. And you know what, folks? That makes follow-up a piece of cake. And then, of course, you always want to be grateful, right? Whether you um, are able to be successful in that or not, you need to be thankful. You need to thank them. Gratitude is good for your soul, and it will make the other person, uh, you know, more open to letting you revisit the, the conversation or more, you know, to more of what you want to present, right, in the future. Do you thank people? just for allowing you the opportunity to introduce them to your technology, or do you walk away they didn't do anything? If you said yes to a positive end, nothing ever really ends. If you look at it that way, it just gets delayed. So remind yourself that most people like to be asked. Most not just like to be, frankly, most people would never make a decision of any kind unless they were asked. So even the Bible says, ask and you shall Try using some of these, you know, just practical things uh, when you ask. And, and I know that if you have that yes, yes in your heart, um, you're going to see a tremendous difference in your life and in your business. But with all that said, the steps toward getting someone else to just say yes doesn't usually hinge on the techniques at all. No doubt there are people out there who have, you know, memorized the rebuttals, you know, and they've gotten pretty good at addressing them. You know, kind of an immediate knee kick reaction to when somebody says, you know, is rejecting the idea. And, you know, it's sometimes you think that's the reality. Most of the time, you know, what's happened is, again, they've never said yes, so they don't believe they're going to have a pause at all. So it really doesn't matter what you do. All that rebuttal stuff and practicing and words here and words there and whatever. Whatever you do, you know, it doesn't make a hill of beans difference if you don't believe it's actually going to happen. So it usually hinges on whether or not you've said yes in the first place. It's your belief system that's the problem. You know, I, I tell you about a lot of things, you know, in my life and, uh, you know, about how it's unfolded and things about, you know, I've done. And, you know, I, I tell you, if you just would get used to saying yes to the miraculous things, just being willing to say yes to believe in the good things, you will see miraculous things unfold in your life that you never thought were possible. You don't want incredible miracles you've rejected in your life so far, all because you refuse to just say yes, all because you had that no in your mind or the doubt in your mind or you've let that four-letter word, uh, fear, to keep you and hold you back from wonderful things. You have no idea how many wonderful friendships or relationships you've passed, no idea how much success you've passed on, how many opportunities you've missed, and you have no idea how many opportunities, you know, to do good for the kingdom of God because you refuse to say yes in your heart. You know, the Bible says, to whom much is given much will be required. If you have heard that line of wisdom, you know it means that we're held responsible, but we've been given. You know, if we've been blessed, you know, with our, our talents, with our wealth, with our knowledge, with our time, and all, everything in between, it is expected that we do good things with that to benefit others. So I sure hope uh, for my like-minded Christian friends, I, I hope you know how much has been given to you, the journey of faith. You know, if not, we need to talk. I hope you know how much has been given to you as you walk through this business of spreading true health. If you've been given the gift of salvation, you're expected to share. In this business, if you believe you've been given a gift to share with the world, not just a nice little health product, a gift, if you believe that in your heart, then you've given a, been given a whole lot. And you know what? You're expected to share. It's not a luxury thing. In both cases, believing you'll hear yes 
because you know the beauty of what you have to share is the key to your success. But you know what? When it comes to your faith, do you want to be trusted with the big things? Or are you vacillating and kind of making excuses for why you aren't ready to do what you already know he wants you to do? Have you ever uh, gotten to that point Isaiah got to? In Isaiah 6, 8, we read, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. You know, when you where you say yes, miracles happen just because you're willing and you believe in your heart. In some ways, that scenario uh, it is, is similar to, to failing to take the steps to close a sale. So if you, if you drop the ball, if you're not willing to say yes in your heart, yes, I can do it, yes, I will do it, yes, they'll say yes, drop the ball. Your client is probably going to walk away to another option or not, to another truth, to another source, to some sort of Internet lie. If you drop that ball, that's what happens. Unfortunately, none of us can afford to vacillate when it comes to the journey of faith uh, and indecisiveness or unwillingness to already know we want you to do will lead to him picking a worthy replacement for you. And you risk never fulfilling what you were created and born to do. So you think about that for a minute. The nature of man has been the nature of man since the very beginning of time. We see it in the Garden of Eden. We see it up to today, and we'll see it until, until Jesus. So why is it that when God told Noah to build the ark, Noah got busy building it instead of rationalizing, vacillating, excusing, you know, how, how, because it made no sense to a man who had never even seen rain, an old man, by the way. Well, in the, in the you know, spiritual world, of course, God knows everything. He, he knew people would say yes, uh, but in your life, your business, your relationships, and your journey of faith, you need to proceed just like Noah did, as if you already know that the other one is going to say yes, you know, and you need to say yes too. And when you present the plan to someone else, you know, whatever that plan is for your business, you know, and they can't make a decision or they're here and won't move forward, Find a worthy replacement. Let me tell you guys, listen, people are all in their own place in life. You're not where I am, and I'm not where you are, and that, that's what makes life a beautiful journey. But we can't bring people kicking and screaming. If they don't have yes in their heart, if they don't have that belief system, if it does to their pores, and they won't take action to share the good things, to be faithful with the little things and the big things, then you need to find where the replacement. You know, when I set out on each new day, I am absolutely confident that I'm going to have an ordained encounter with somebody else, at least one. And I also know that I've got something I'm going to say yes to. I'm sure of it. Not just sure of the good I have to share from my faith to my business, but I'm sure they'll be saying yes. The only work I really have to do when I'm willing to say yes is to ask the right questions about their life, and the entire picture of their life will be revealed to me, and then I know what solution to offer. I say yes. I anticipate them saying yes. I can almost visualize them saying yes. And you know what? It shows on, on from, you know, from the inside out. So once I find a need, I begin to fill it. And before you know it, if they're just saying yes, not, not because I'm skilled, you know, before you know it, they are, right? Not because I'm skilled, not because, but because I already have the yes in my own heart and it spills over into theirs. Sometimes people look at my life and, you know, they see extraordinary things. And you know what? I, I often have to agree with them. My life is extraordinary. But the extraordinary things they see, they don't come down to Lynn Gardner. It doesn't come down. It comes down to me to say yes. You know, many years ago, God flipped the switch on my business, you know, a business that I had been immensely successful at, and I loved, oh, gosh, I had a love for that business, my real estate auction business. And one minute, I was passionately in love with the business, and the next minute, the joy and the passion just had dissipated. It was a feeling in the world. And as I struggled to figure out, you know, well, what's what's next, God? And what's the next chapter going to look like if this sizzle was gone here? And God made it abundantly clear that my voice, my words, my gift of, uh, of stringing together uh, a messages, right, was to be used to glorify him, period. And when he spoke to my thing I did was I cried. I, and frankly, I cried with conviction because my voice, to me, had always been used for the big bucks. And, and boy, did it work, right? And then, you know what happened after I cried and I, I kind of dealt with that conviction? I said yes. Very much like I say, I said, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do, what you want me to say. I'll speak where you want me to speak. And I have to say at that moment, I had no idea what that was going to look like at all. So 
And I have to say also, if not for the yes, I probably wouldn't have done 99% of the things I do today. Listen, folks, my flesh didn't want to write books. I didn't inspire to be a writer. Uh, you know, I'm extraordinarily busy beyond what most of you could ever begin to imagine. But when God told me to do it, I said yes. You know, my flesh didn't seek opportunities to be a speaker in this world of ours. You know, I say this without boasting, but I've been on the Speakers Bureau. You know, I've, I've made tremendous money out there on that. I, my flesh, this beautiful new world, said, hey, i got to get out there. But when my brother Omar Ramirez called and asked me to take a time slot on his uh, Team Excellence call, I said yes. And, you know, Initially, I thought, wonder, what in the world am I going to talk about each week? But because I said yes, my belief system only saw success. And the Team Excellence called an incredibly beautiful season of sharing and changed lives, frankly, forever. My brother Sam Michaels asked me to take a morning each month, and I said yes. I didn't think about how busy I already was or how I was already doing a weekly call for Omar. I said yes. And being with you each month, it's one of my the greatest in my life. I said yes to the call to open up the farm to the masses, you know, something so far outside my comfort zone. Listen, guys, if, if you've not been here, I mean, you know, this is where I live, right? It's like the whole world comes invading your space, and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. You know, I, it's not my thing to plan a party. Person that, hey, come in, take your shoes off, there's the refrigerator. I'm not the person to bring together all the details, but you know what I am? I'm a willing servant, and I said yes, and the blessings that have overflowed from that one thing I said yes to overwhelm me. And frankly, being, bring tears to my eyes every time I really think God gave me everything that was needed. And he provided me with help on every corner. And I'm sure that he always will. But, you know, with that, you know, that uh, last year the, the, the event had to be canceled because of COVID and restrictions and mask and insanity. And I had a hard time this year vacillating back and forth, you know, because, see, my son is getting the time of that event that's happening one week apart. And the event is tremendously, you know, <laughs> overwhelming with work. And I'm doing a lot for my son's wedding. I had to make a decision. So you guys know it's God first, family second, then my business. And so, you know, the reason it was so difficult is because I said yes. And I felt like I was letting God down. I was letting you down. You get to the yes. I said yes when it came to my family. You know, I again, I, I got four amazing kids. I didn't plan any of them. And uh, I came to my faith between the first two girls and the and the two boys and you know I, I, I said yes. I, I said this this is not what I had for my life Lord. This is what you, I, I said yes to giving up my time. They didn't hear I'm too tired, I'm too busy, leave me alone for they didn't hear I said yes. I gave up my own life to be able to give them a life. I wasn't out there, you know, taking Friday night for date night and going out with my girls, say drink wine. I was there for my children. I said their needs we you know, today we laugh because now, you know, two of them have kids and, and they see how tired they are at the end of the day. And and my son said to me recently, I still can't believe, Mom, how you had the, the energy to go from bed to bed to read to each one, to pray with each one, to love you on each one. Four kids, night working myself to death trying to provide. But I said yes to their needs above my own. And you know what? I have an amazing tribe, mostly because I said yes to raising up a godly generation instead of just raising honor roll students and all stars. My life is extraordinary, praise the Lord. But it's all because I say yes. I said yes to success a very long time ago, and I've known incredible success because of it. I didn't let fear get in the way or excuses or vacillate. When I had an opportunity, I jumped on it like a hungry dog because I already believed in the outcome. I said yes to doing whatever I had to do, again, to raise up that solid uh, godly generation and, you know, the event, you know, are eternal. I said yes to God. And because I do, he uses me in the most remarkable ways. An imperfect woman with no extraordinary talent whatsoever, just a willingness to do what he wants me to do. There wasn't anything extraordinary, by the way, about Moses or Elijah or David or Isaiah 
or Esther. There are, you know, a whole bunch of other ones, right? The only thing that sets them apart from you and me is their willingness to say yes and to believe in the results without seeing a roadmap of how you're going to get there. When God called Moses to lead his people, you know, Moses, he tried to make some lame excuse, you know, excuse away from him because he said, I can't speak. I can't. So God took that away, and he gave him the tools that he needed to succeed. And you know what? If you encounter an excuse in your relationship with your children, in your journey of faith, or in your business, you need to be prepared to offer a solution for the excuses too. The very key to just success rate. So the $64 question is, have you ever said yes to this business? Oh, I know, I know you're in it. That's obvious, right? I know you own the technology. I, I know you attend meetings, and maybe you never miss one. I know you're on calls. You're on today. You're listening to a replay. Maybe you give water away like a camel, and maybe you're pretty good. At, but have you ever said yes in your own heart, yes to the positive results, yes to the success, yes to the lives you're changing? Are you just, you know, hoping other people will do what you want them to do? Have you ever said that? Yes, I can do it. Yes, I can be successful. Yes, I can reach the masses. Yes, I can change lives. Yes, the right words. You see, if if, if you are, you know, one to say, oh, I, I hope I can do this. I really like it. You know, I'm going to try to make this work. You know, you haven't said yes yet. And you'll likely just be playing with the business like a cat plays with a mouse, right? Money isn't everything, okay? If you know me personally, you know that um, I, I like success. I know I don't make excuses for making money. But trust me when I tell you, it's not my God. You see, money's just a vehicle. If you've gotten around to reading Break the Chains, that's what you'll see. All the money that you ever make, it all belongs to God. So there's no reason to be boasting about it, worshiping it, because it all, it's all his. It's just a vehicle. And all all the silver and gold belong to him. But you might reject the idea of building a big organization all because you think it's bad to have all that money. You know, you're worshiping money. But you know what? You'd be 110% wrong. That's how good is spread from one corner of the earth to the other, whether it's revival, whether it's a business. It's reaching more people that makes the difference. The more people you reach for your business, you know what? People you'll have saying yes if you've already said it yourself. So that equates to more people for the kingdom of God. And yes, for my Christian friends out there, I want to tell you, drive home the message probably every month. It's imperative that you understand that your business is merely a vehicle to reach people in the world for Christ. That's it. The market or mission field. It's not your money maker. It's your mission field. So building up a big organization is a whole lot more than having a big bank account. It's having a big reward in heaven. You know, we've talked about this before. I, I was uh, very blessed to have met uh, three Big Amway people, I don't know <laughs> the rank. Uh, you know, they were big, double diamonds or something like that, whatever. I met them in real estate. You see, in the, in the auction world, we're used to selling unusual things. It's the best way to sell an unusual thing. And they build houses over the top, okay? It's just kind of crazy, you know, how the flashy, you know, success kind of stuff takes place. But I, I, I can realize by, through one of my dear, dear friends um, in that business asked me to be a motivational speaker for a couple of events. And he told me, it's never been about products. It's never been about money. It's all about see, the kingdom of God. They, so when you see big houses, Valley's Ramway, people all emotional. You see church on Sunday and people coming to Christ. So the core of that, you know, probably the, the first and biggest uh, network marketing company uh, our country has ever known at least, right? That was the core is to spread the message of the, of the good news of Jesus Christ. So look at that. We could spend weeks discussing all the ones to have said yes, and, and it shows. You know, the most successful people in the world said Yes, to a world of opportunity, very much like my friend in that first conversation I talked about. You know, if she had just said yes, you know, she would see the most miraculous things. Well, the most successful people, they all sit there and think about it and ponder it and talk to six friends and, and take time to, you know, long time to pray. In other words, the most successful people in the world just said yes. You know, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can succeed. Yes, I'm willing to put in the work. And just say yes, for heaven's sake. We could spend months. Uh, discussing people in the Bible who said yes, and they changed the journey of life for all of us because of it. You talk about success, that's what truth's like. The biggest difference between you and me and all those incredibly successful people and all the saints we, re we read about is whether or not we say yes in the heart. You know, when yes comes from the heart, everything and anything is possible. There is an extraordinary life waiting for you, you know, to, to, to yes to, a life of success. 
a life of miracles, a life so full it cannot be contained. Your skills aren't going to get you there. You know, all uh, you know, the, the, the list of things you do to set your schedule, that's not going to get you there. How well you do present, presentations won't get you there, or demonstrations won't get you there. How many meetings you, you won't get you there. Not any of the systems that we have at our fingertips, masterful systems, they're not going to get you there. Just saying yes to yourself, to your heart, in your spirit will get you there. And your yes will impact the world. So let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And have you said yes to life and everything in between? For the most important things in life, not saying yes is actually saying no. From your relationships, you know, with your children, to your journey of faith, and most assuredly to your business. It's your yes that begins each phase of a successful process of life. In relationships, yes, you can make that marriage work, or even I will find a suitable partner. With your children, yes, I will raise up a godly generation. Yes, I will take the time. Yes, I will make the sacrifices. In the journey of faith, yes, you are ready to go wherever God wants you to go and to do whatever he wants you to do so that he won't find a worthy replacement that was willing to Lord, here I am. And yes, certainly if you want to be successful, believe it or not, folks, it is that simple. Just say yes and see it for yourself. And that's it for me, Wade. Wow, amazing. Um, Lynn, that is so incredible. I love it. I say yes. I say yes. <laughs> yes, you have said yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. I say yes. That is, Man, that is so wonderful. What a great... Uh, what a great message for us this morning, um, man! Just uh, digging in, guys, and, and uh, you know, have you said yes? I mean, and just like you said, Lynn, you, you know, yeah, it's one thing that you're here, but have you truly said yes? And man, mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. We have a, yes. we have a hand up if you want to take a comment uh, before I tell talk a little bit more about what you're doing. Let's go to Miss Marilyn in Arizona, Marilyn. Hi, good morning, and I want to say thank you, Lynn. Uh, I spoke, I've even heard you a couple of times, and then I tell you, this is not really uh, with me because I really feel on, on a soul basis that really um, I'm saying more yes in a, on a soul level than I ever have because I've experienced so much resistance to having a higher life or a higher expression of success. And uh, it did resonate with me, and I just want to say thank you. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, my friend. And, you know, it's a wonderful journey, right? We just have to believe <laughs> believe in the yes, have that belief system, and, and, and just uh, reach as many people as we can, not to hustle a sale, but to change a life. Amen? So thank you for that. I appreciate you. Amen. And, uh, wait, I did want to say something before you go into your, your thing, and that is as I was preparing for this, I actually thought about you and your journey. And how when you you were pretty beat up, man, I'm sure. You know, life had, uh, you know, there was a tipping point. You guys were struggling. And when you saw this miracle, you know, presented to you on a silver platter, you said yes. You didn't stop and say, well, I don't know where I'd even have a store. And there's only little squares of footage. And you, 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 I don't have any money. You didn't say any of those things. That wasn't just belief. It was your willingness to say yes. And it's us today that you and Gina have. Look at you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That is so wonderful. Amen. That's awesome. That's so good. Say yes. That's right. We have Kimberly down in uh, San Antonio. Good morning, Miss Kimberly. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing wonderful. Good morning, sister. Good morning, Lynn. Oh, my goodness. Uh, every time you come, you, you always hit the nail on the head, right? It's just so powerful when you're speaking. Um, speaking. So I was just thinking about what you were saying and how, like, through my journey and my life, I and I always questioned, mm-hmm. why did you say yes? Why did you say yes to that? What do you, <laughs> but right. to me, it's, it's, right, it's going to help you right. to grow to be able to do, be, um, and live better. Uh, so thank you for balancing it out, the thought, rounding it, everything out. So you just bring clarity to things, and I appreciate you so oh. much for that. So, oh, thank I you. appreciate yeah. you and your friendship, Billy, yeah. really, for oh, your words welcome. of encouragement. And you're so right. I mean, it's just that, yes, you know, it's like uh, sharing the gospel, you know, in my heart. I'm like, well, yeah, right when they say yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. look at what I bring to the table with the salvation, right? When it, when it's a business, well, why would they say, why wouldn't they say yes? You have to have the yes in you for them to get the yes, and it's yes. that simple. 
Wow. Yeah. God bless you, my friend. So, so good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Mm-hmm. You betcha. Amen. I love that. Man, awesome, awesome. All right, guys. Listen, uh, uh, Lynn, as we talked, I talked a little bit about at the start, you are an author. You're an author. Um, one of your last books uh, that was written was um, the uh, – uh, uh, darn it, <laughs> Breaking the Chains. <laughs> Break the Chains, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Breaking the Chains. That's right, mm-hmm. Breaking the Chains, yeah. And uh, what an amazing book, guys. Um, she's She has four bestsellers. Well, I, I guess her – I don't know if they're all considered bestsellers or considered best. No. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, Thank you. Break, break now, uh, Toilets, Taps, and Trash actually is the only one that made it to bestseller on Amazon. That's okay. Um, you know, because um, it, it's really reaching, you know, and again, it's like, uh, what? Since I don't really know, you know, what I do for a living, we'll look at the list of books and say, well, that's kind of weird. It's like you hop around. Well, God have me hop around. So first thing was a little piece of my heart in Walking on Water. I am so... Uh, blessed by the lives that have been changed by those words. I mean, it's just amazing. People who have struggled the same things I struggled with as a child, people who had not been able to reach a place of forgiveness, and they would say, wow, if you can do it, I can do it. So that was uh, the first one, and I'm so grateful to God for that one. And took a lot of nerve, as you all know, from my story. And then the next one came, Toilets, Taps, and Trash. And I wrote that one, you know, as a simple look at a water problem without, you know, scaring people and doing drops. It was a way of just saying, we got a problem. You know, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, and there are solutions. And that did make it the bestseller. And next came uh, 12 Steps to Climbing Out of the Dark Place, kind of a simple step program to address um, depression. That thing did this last year because a lot of people were struggling with depression um, and they hadn't ha- had struggled before. And by the way, I'm not saying, uh, you know, suck it up. You don't need meds or anything like that. But there are, I've been there and done that, and there are some practical things to help you get that cloud lifted. And then, of course, the last one um, was for the love of God, break the chains. And it got some of the things I mentioned today, you know, that all, all the gold and silver belongs to him. So hope you're having fun, but you're not necessarily being a good steward of, of what he wants you to do. And so he just burned that in my heart. There was no getting around that one. And, of course, you guys heard about the adversity uh, when it was first being rolled out. And, and if you um, share my belief, you know, when you face a bunch of adversity, it's going to be amazing on the other side. <laughs> and so that thing has just overwhelmed me almost every day. As I hear from a pastor, or you, know, you can't believe how many pastors are reading this and being convicted. What a beautiful thing, you know, where they think it's just, uh, they see the church, you know, just addressing the church itself. Other people that say, oh, my goodness, God forgive me for, I didn't know these things about money. And so it's a beautiful journey. There's another one in the works. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> You'll have to hear, see it when it comes out. But, again, that was, a, you know, a God thing. And so I'm just a messenger, and all because I said, yes, I'm not a, perfect writer. I'm not a stinking good writer, but I'm a good messenger. And so that's what I do. The Bible study I talked about, um, life got in the way for me a little bit, folks. So that study, um, it's a ladies' Bible study, and it's going to be online for you. It's kind of like a, a course, if you will, with some video uh, footage and some, you know, uh, module homework kind of stuff. It's entitled, Be the Kind of Woman. And it's uh, it's empowering for women to see you know, who are you in this whole journey? Because I think for so long women, uh, you know, have been taught, well, you know, it's good you're a woman, you're, you know, you're, you're the softer side, but, you know, you're not to be heard. And so that's just not true. So anyway, we'll be addressing that Bible study. That will be released this coming weekend. So you can look for it. You could go to livinglarger.life. There are going to be a lot of those kinds of things. The most convenient way for me to house that stuff is in my website. Okay, so it's just much easier than trying to do, you know, pick another platform. But all of those, um, you know, Jane, um, faith-based uh, messages. That's all going to be, of course, no charge on that. You'll have to just register so it's re- the, um, you know, the course is released for you to view. So. That's what um, I'm doing. I am sad the event's not happening. I vacillated like an idiot. I could not get myself, but it was all because I had said yes, and I deal with thinking I'm letting people down, and more than that, I struggle with thinking I'm letting God down, but this is just the way it's rolling for whatever reason um, this time. So that's it, Wade. That's all I've been working on. Well, honey, I know you're never letting God down. That's that's for sure. I, could, I, I know that personally. Um, so I'm just in your living larger 
um, Living Larger Dot Life, guys. Living Larger Dot Life, and uh, um, mm-hmm. the book here. Um, also, those books are on Amazon. Um, when you look up Lynn Gardner, just look up one of those titles, and that'll help mm-hmm. take you right to uh, Lynn's information. Um, and I don't know if it's a page. I'm not sure how that all works, but uh, but get into where all those books are, and then uh, just uh, start living larger and larger territory. I love this. I love your website. Um, just digging in there. So guys, remember that again. Living larger dot life. Um, get in here. You can um, dig around in there. And as Lynn was saying, that uh, be the kind of woman is uh, bottled up. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, and then also mm-hmm. your podcast. Is your podcast is doing really well? I saw that on Facebook this morning. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Yeah, you know, and I, and I haven't really been tending to it much. You know, uh, there is a um, you know one that's almost like a um, I don't know a devotional kind of podcast that's just coming out. That's not I can't attribute that uh, those numbers to that. It's definitely. Uh, my other podcast, but you have to be, I said, my goodness, you got to be kidding me. Asia's got nothing else to do. Why are they listening to me, right? <laughs> but uh, that was, a, I'll tell you what that was, you know, God, you know, again, messenger, that's it. And I said, yes, right? But I get uh, I'm so, um, so busy, you know, ministering and doing all the things I do and making a living. And, um, you know, the bottom line is that kicked me in the spiritual, I got taken to the spiritual woodshed over that, that if I could just kind of haphazardly man that thing. It's got results like that. I'm I'm definitely dropping the ball. So I have to be uh, doing a lot more with that. 79th and I think it was 79, right? 79th and uh, throughout Asia is unbelievable. Yeah. That's awesome. That is that is incredible. I think that is amazing. But uh, but I believe you're amazing too. So I, I, it doesn't surprise me. And uh, I see it. Con- I see it continue to move forward more and more and more. Just uh, just as you said, say yes. Um, guys, That's what a say, yes. great message that you've brought in us today. Um, Lynn, uh, you know, you are always one of my favorite calls each and every each and every month. And, and I, you know, me and my wife both just love you dearly. We uh, we look forward to the time when we're going to be able to get together. And we're going to we're working on putting a big event together next June, early June here. So maybe uh, maybe mm-hmm. we'll get just here or something well there you go and and i'm definitely going to see you in louisiana i'll be there you guys over in louisiana september right yeah i need my fix okay (laughs) i need to see people i need to see you guys so i'll be at that event i'm looking forward to it and of course at louisiana gang they're people of excellence and everything they do is excellent so if you guys uh you know forgive me for not having a date in front of me um but you guys uh, you know don't miss out of that event Everybody in this company right now needs a shot in the arm anyway. Um, oh, yeah. That will be a tremendous event. That so I look forward to, uh, did you say June of next year? Yep, yep. So we're working on that That's right cool. now, just uh, making sure that right. the, we don't want an addict doing anything about the same time we are. So we're, <laughs> we're exactly. working on Exactly, yeah. That. Yes, that time of year for sure, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But but it's a great time to be in Colorado at that time of year and, and uh gives a lot of reprieve for some of those people in the south where it's so hot, you know, so that'll be good. Um but anyway, Lynn, thank you so much, honey, for all that you do and all that you are. Thank you for the prayer warrior that you are and, and uh when I was thinking about it this morning I'm like, you know what, when Lynn speaks she shakes the she shakes <laughs> I love that. Shakes the leaves, I'd love that. <laughs> I love that. You guys, if you've ever seen War Room, by the way, when I'm in serious battle, that's me. I'm yep. walking around like a maniac <laughs> saying, yeah, I'm believing. Right? So thank you for that. That's a, It's the a greatest honor to serve the Lord. And you guys are so sweet to allow me this um, this time each month to share with you. Well, we appreciate you. All right, different speakers, I'm going to open up the call for everybody to thank each other for being here today. Thank, thank Lynn for what a wonderful, wonderful message. And Miss Jenny for doing our reading this morning. So let's open it up, everybody. Here we go. Let's head to the school of the 11.